Hi, welcome back. On the last video, we learned how to set a cookie for a user. On this video, I want to show you how to read the cookie and how to do things based on that information. So let's go ahead and open our co-editor. All right. And last time we had this file here and we set the name for the cookie, the value, some expiration date that we need to set. We use the time function to do that and we did some multiplication with seconds here. This is a week. If you wanted to do more times in advance, you multiply this week, all right? Because we already have the week here, so you can multiply times. Let's say you want you want this to be in four weeks in a month from now, then you multiply this week times four. And that would be seven times 428, right? Or, I don't know, 365, okay? So, I mean, whatever number you want, if you want two weeks, you, you put two. If you want four weeks, then you put four, okay? So, I just wanted to show you that because last time, I didn't go into details about that, but it was it's really easy to do. But anyway, I'm going to leave it like this, and we're going to set the expiration for one week. That's fine. Now, let's go ahead down here and read the data, and let's do something depending on that data. So, we set a cookie to check for, I don't know, whatever, visit, or right now, it just says some name, right? So, what we want to do is, we want to get this value, and I told you the way we get this value, this value is saved automatically in a super global co called cookie. So, we're going to use that to get this information out. Okay, remember that the cookie, this one, this super global here, is going to be an associate, it's going to have the information in a associative array. All right. So what we want to do is we want to find out first if this cookie was set, if the user came to our website and we found the cookie. That's the first thing that we do. So we do a check and we do that with an if statement. And we are going to be doing that with another function called is set. This function is going to find out if this super global is set, it's available, it was set. So we're going to say underscore and then cookie right right there now remember what we want to check is that we don't want to just check to see if any cookies available we want to check for a specific cookie we want to check for a value you know this is an associative array so we need to check that associative array value so the value of this associative array is some name so what we need to do is check for this value here because this is the value that we're setting the name for the cookie so we want to make sure, we want to find out if this cookie name is set. If this person comes back and we see this value here, well, what are we going to do with the application, right? So we're going to put brackets here and in single quotes or double quotes, it's up to you basically. As a matter of fact, let's do double quotes. Double quotes is our a little better. I like him better. You can do more things with MPHP. But anyway, so we, we're checking if if it's set, if this cookie is set, called some name, if, they, if this person comes back, what are we going to do? Well, first things, this is the way you do that. You need to grab this value out of it. All right. So let's, let's say, let's call this someone. All right. And we are going to get this value and assign it a variable. Why not? Right. So that's the first thing that we got to do. So that way we can work with it a little better, right? Instead of using this whole thing. We, we can use this, but why Why we, we want to use that? It's too long, right? Let's set it to a small, to a variable, and then we can play around with that value. So, so now if this is set, right? If they come back, we're going to set, we're going to set them, the value of someone, of the cookie name, to someone right here. Okay? So if... If it's not set, then just so our page doesn't keep looking for a variable, right? We're going to set this variable to nothing because it might blow up on us. <laughs> we don't want this to, we don't want PHP to give us an error, right? So let's find out. Now we set this and let's just echo it on, this, on the screen just to, so you can see it. Someone. So if I go back to cookies, I should be able to see something. Let's go because it's going to detect it's us. So it's going to do something. Let's go. There we go. 100. So it's displaying the value here. All right. So it's getting the value 
of the cookie and displaying it to us right here. All right. So if for some reason we have another value for that, we, we would do something else. But right now, so we are checking for the value. We find the person. We find that cookie that we set on that person's computer, right? And then we apply that value, the name. We took the name of that cookie, right? We took the name, and then we are echoing the value of it with the name, right? Because it's not going to echo the name of the cookie. It's going to echo the value of the cookie because the value is what counts. The value is what we're going to be using to do other things with our application. Now, this is a very straightforward application of cookie, but you get the general idea here. We are detecting a user and doing something with that data that we receive. And what we do most of the time is personalize the user. And now, personalize the user's experience. Now, keep in mind that you're not limited to the cookies that you can set. All right? You can, you can not only, this is only one cookie. We can set multiple cookies. All right? Every time you come back to our site, we can set a different cookie onto your browser. And then we can do things depending on that value. But anyways, I want to thank you for you know, looking at this lecture and hopefully you were able to get some valuable information from this and know that this is very powerful information that you can apply to your applications. As you become a programmer, you're going you're gonna to encounter this type of uh, functionalities out there and you're going to be able to work with them. Just with this example here, if you practice and you can get better and better, you can make applications that are very user friendly. I want to thank you again and I see you on the next lecture.